What's going on everyone and welcome to FamCast episode 50, big milestone for us. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Trevor and we've got Tim on the podcast today. Um, we're, we're looking to kick off the new year, uh, new year with FamCast. I know we've been gone for a while, um, but we wanted to start off uh, 2019 strong with some uh, pretty exciting news. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably heard uh, Bungie is, is splitting. Uh, the, the divorce is happening finally. They're splitting from Activision. Um, cheers could be heard from around the world. Everyone is super excited about this, so we want to uh, dive into that on this podcast today. And also, with it being a new year, um, that also brings a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation as far as what we'll see this year. So we kind of want to talk about what uh, the next console generation is looking like. Uh, since we're, we're kind of getting towards the end, which, as wild as that is to believe, we're kind of getting to the end of this, uh, uh, this console cycle. Uh, I mean, me and Tim worked together for the, the, the current gen launch, uh, Xbox One and PS4, was that 2013? It was the best, too. We nailed it. I mean, that was, that's crazy. That was, it's going on six years. It would, uh, yeah. Uh, which is about right. I mean, they usually say new consoles every five years, mm-hmm. right? Um, yep. So, well, but still, it's just crazy to think about that. It's been like I don't feel like my consoles are that old, no, and, and they still look great, and everything about them is still yeah. great. I mean, and we'll touch on this too, but I think part of it is because they they kind of upgrade them as they go along. Mm-hmm. There's um, like to where it's you have a gen and a half, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is Xbox yeah. one point five, PlayStation Pro one point five. Like, yeah, exactly. What it is? That, it's exactly what we're looking at. Um, so th- those are the two topics we'll, we're going to be covering today. Um, just to kind of kick off the new year with some uh, some excitement, but uh, I do want to get the the news of of Bungie out of the way, and I think Tim, you're going to have some more insight on this uh, than I will, since you're you, you got really into Destiny and Destiny oh, yeah. Two. Oh yeah. Uh, both of those, you were like pretty hard hardcore into, and I I know with Black Ops Four, you've been playing that quite a bit. Oh yeah. Um. So just a just a kind of a recap here. Um. Activision bought or. I'm not sure of the exact specifics, but uh, basically Activision and, and Bungie had a partnership to where Activision, as their publisher, kind of oversaw um, you know, the development of these games and really had some, some serious say in it, from at least from what we can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, so some examples, um, we know that Activision, uh, kind of like, like EA, loves their, their microtransactions. Um, so with Black Ops 4, I, and correct me if I'm wrong in any of this, just from what I was looking up in our research, uh, you've got loot boxes, which aren't necessarily bad. And that was in uh, World War II as well. Okay, so we, we've got loot boxes in, in Call of Duty now. We've got the locking of maps uh, behind different editions. The locking of maps behind different like, editions. Like not being able to access a map unless you have a specific I mean, edition. Yeah, that, again, that's been in previous Call of Duties, but I kind of understand what they're saying there. Yes, that is a true statement. Okay, and then another one being, uh, I guess there's some controversies surrounding the the battle pass as far as what uh, I'm guessing it's that's their season pass this time around. It's just like it's like the no, well, the battle pass is just like the Fortnite pass and just like the 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 PUBG pass. That's what okay. it is. That's it's exactly what it is. It's just like the battle okay. pass from Fortnite and everything. So it's the same thing. Okay, perfect. Well, that, I just kind of want to throw out a few things that, yep. that I had heard. Um, and kind of uh, alongside with that, we know that with Destiny, uh, Destiny 1 had four paid expansions yep. that uh, you pretty much had to purchase. Yep. Um, they weren't really optional because if you didn't, you're... You couldn't progress. You're just... Yeah, you can't progress. You, you can't really do anything, which... And, and that's fine. It's the same thing with World of Warcraft. Right. was the same way with EverQuest. Right. Um, now... Granted, I guess with some of those, you can still... I don't know. I, I won't get into it too But much. there's a I'm point just... behind that, though. The big point behind that is using, right. like, WoW as an example. Destiny launched four expansions within a year of its lifetime. Within the first year of its lifetime. WoW launches one every couple years, something like that. Yeah, right. every and two mo- years, most probably. Big, especially when they're going to claim that they're an MMO. That, you know, like, you, you can't... You, and then they keep... Anytime it benefited them, they'd be like, well, we're not really an MMO. We're more of a shooter. And then when they're trying to use MMO elements, well, we're kind of like an MMO. You know, we're not just yeah. a shooter. So, like, okay. So, at that point, you're forcing these people who... It's a grind game. Destiny is a grind yeah. game. Huge grind. And I that's what drew me into it. I love grind games. I'm not opposed to the grind games. So, and, and I enjoyed it. And I played it. And I liked it. But it became to the point to where it's like, okay, so you're grinding for this, these guns, you're grinding for this light level, you're doing all this stuff, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, expansion, 
um, you have to buy it. Otherwise, you can't continue. People are going to outpace you because of all this and you don't get any of this neat stuff. Okay, so you buy it. Sweet. Okay, sweet. Two months later, expansion, you need you, you need to buy it. And then, like, they always have one big expansion, right? They have, like, four, three or four smaller yeah. ones. And then they have, like, their big one that, like, makes it last longer. The um, Forsaken or... or the, that yeah, it yeah, it was something like that. Like, in, in, in both Destiny games had that exact same thing. They both had that big expansion. And, and that's fine. But... What always annoyed me about D- Bungie, or not Bungie, uh, Destiny, was you you do all this grind, but in two months it means nothing. Like, that's the right. biggest problem. It just means nothing. Sure. And I, that that's definitely an issue. Like you mentioned, if we are going to compare this to other MMOs out there, um, like WoW, you, you can play for uh, you know two years before it gets to the next expansion. But even then, um, when that next expansion comes out... Mm. Your your progress is still there from the the, the, the previous version right. or previous expansion. Kind of. Whereas, and I'm not saying that's not the case with the expansion packs, but the fact that we went from Destiny to Destiny Two, yeah. and you, and correct me if I'm wrong again, but you couldn't transfer anything. No, over. you lost everything. You started fresh. Right. You could so, transfer your character. Your character could transfer over, but you started right. fresh still. It's just your names there. Yeah, exactly. So there's not really any, right. there's no benefit really other right. than knowing that, hey, this is my character. So that that in itself is frustrating, right? Like, right. And, and I'm sure it, it you, there are things you have to do be, with it being a console game mm-hmm. to where you have to improve things that can't be right. done in just an expansion pack. Right. I get that, but the fact that it's, Destiny was kind of at the beginning of the, the cycle. I think that might have been 2014. Uh, that sound right? Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, don't quote me on it, but 2014. That, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so in the matter of just, and we'll just say that we're at the beginning of 2019, so we'll just say a matter of four years, we've had two Destiny games and seven expansions altogether. Roughly ballpark, yeah. That's insane to and, me. And two of which of those expansions were like, like 1.5s of those games. Right, right. Yeah, like the, the Forsaken, and then because they actually launched as like physical they, copies yeah, they actually, too. and they're like forty dollar exp- like yeah, it's a big yeah, deal. like they were they weren't cheap expansions by any means. Um, to bring up um, a point of what someone said sh- though, this is a big point actually. Okay, um, that's probably what annoyed me. One of the more things that annoyed me was like, and, and I'll I'll use WoW as an example. Like, you someone will do all this grinding for a year in a game like that, and in Destiny. If you just buy the new game and you buy the new expansion and all this stuff, they basically get you to that player level that has been grinding this whole time for free. Sure. Like, and wouldn't that annoy you? Like, if someone, if like, let's, like, if I started playing WoW, which I have, and I was just like, okay, um, here's a hundred dollars. I'm where you're at. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, there's there is a little bit of that in WoW. Like, you can buy a there character is. boost to get you current. Correct. But it, it doesn't get you all. The, like, it doesn't max you out. It just makes sure, like, hey, we don't want you to pay. Like, play like the past like 12 years right. expansions at the same pace we know you want to play with your friends right. here's a, a paid option but in but it's you have tons of like you're just way more experienced but you have a lot of things i will never have right you oh, know for and, sure. and like you have yeah. a lot of, like it's just it's you, you you could tell the difference between someone just starting a veteran and wow easy, sure very very easily um and that's not the case in destiny you don't think i, I like you'd not really. Like, if I started, sure. and if I started playing it this week and bought whatever I needed to buy, like, I'm sure there are people will have some guns. Because some guns are harder to unlock. Some guns you have to do certain things to get. Right. But, or Zer will just fucking sell one, you know? You know, they, yeah. stuff like that. Like, there's ways around certain things. And so the, the, the expansion cycle is one side of it, but also kind of circling back mm-hmm. to what we talked about with Call of Duty, the, um, the paid-for uh, Ingrams mm-hmm. in the game. Right. Like, now, that's... And again, so I don't I don't find anything wrong with loot boxes as long as they're not game impacting. Correct. Like when you have a multiplayer game and someone can pay money and they mm-hmm. get a, a an actual boost that makes them better at the game, right. I don't agree with that. Right. Um, uh, boxes that give you know different uh, vehicles yeah. that, that just look cool or right. skins, cosmetics. Yeah, perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. Do it all day long. Yeah. That that's that's totally cool. Yeah. Um, but there were, I saw one as an example at, as I was, I was researching this, it gives you a 10% uh, experience boost. Right. Like that's, I don't know, right. that, so, that, that just seems wild to me. It, it's an interesting thing there, right? Because like, so for Call of Duty, uh, the battle pass is free. Unlike other games, like there, it's free. Now I, I there are 
I can't remember if there's like an elite version or not. I don't think so because I've never paid for a battle pass on Call of Duty. Right. You could pay to tier up if you just don't want to put the time into it, you know. But you don't. But you can do that in any game as well. Like they all have that element. Okay. Um, but as far as like the loot boxes in Destiny now, unless this has changed. Other than the XP thing, which, I mean, I'm not going to gripe so much on XP. Like, it is kind of weird, but, I mean, 10% XP is 10% XP, right? But there hasn't, unless something's changed since I stopped. And, like, look, I loved Destiny. Like, you know how much I enjoyed it. I was super stoked for Destiny 2. Like, I loved the concept of Destiny and what it could have been and what it should have been. Uh, which right. is one reason we'll get into why I think this, this break-off is going to be great. Um, but I didn't see a a pay to win mechanic in that game like in terms of loot boxes a lot of it's cosmetic other than the xp thing which i mean i believe it's been a while since i've played but other than the xp thing i there it was it was all cosmetic stuff you know oh you right. got a cool ship oh you got this dance that you can do this emo out of this thing um but most of it was that unless someone wants to correct me like by all means correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think it was a pay to win other than i guess the xp thing which i don't consider that pay to, i mean it's 10 percent xp Oh. That's no different, in, the, in my opinion, than, like, me and you playing WoW together when I'm new because I have, you know, newbie uh, stuff right. and we're playing, stuff like that. Sure. So, w and, I, and I can respect that for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's it varies from person to person as far as their, how, how much it actually, how much they actually uh, see the impact of that. But thinking about Bungie themselves and not necessarily the, the games... Mm -hmm. Because I, I know when we talk Bungie, we're talking Destiny. Mm -hmm. When we're talking Call of Duty, we're really talking about Activision. Activision, correct. Um, so with when I think of Bungie, I always think of... These are the people that brought us this epic space shooter mm -hmm. that changed a lot. Yep. Um, I mean, that was the... And I was not an Xbox fan when the original Xbox launched, but that was the game. That was the multiplayer game. It's one of the it reasons like Xbox the, stayed alive. Like, if without Halo, yeah. Microsoft might have died, or the Xbox might have, would almost most likely have failed. Right. I mean, it, it was the it was the uh, the golden eye of mm -hmm. its of its time. You know, like that was the the couch co op. You know, split screen um, game to play at parties and everything. It. And really, it, it kind of led the way for console uh, multiplayer. Yeah, um, they had a much I, better I, online service than PlayStation did at the time. Actually, I think PlayStation right. was almost non-existent. Right. So, with that being said, with with what we've seen that what Bungie can do with with Halo mm -hmm. and how how great they treated at least when when it was Bungie. Right. Now we're dealing with Bungie Activision. Right. What What do you see as a? Because I, I know you're a pretty big fan mm -hmm. of. Um, of all these franchises that we're talking about, do you think that we're going to see a big shift in what um, in what Bungie brings us now that they don't have Activision kind of looming over them? I wouldn't be surprised that after a few months or whatever, whenever we figure out what's actually going to be like the, the the fate of Destiny and all that stuff, um, if if we get a big statement from Bungie saying we can finally make the game we actually wanted to make, because I will never forget after the first destiny game how they had one of their guys walk out right one of the people from bungie walked out was like he quit or something something happened to the point where he's like look he put it on reddit he's like this game is basically bare bones compared to what we wanted to make we wanted to do all these things and we were told scrap it all do this um that's why there's very yeah. little story that's why the factions are basically dead and non-existent there was so much more like there's there was supposed to be so much more to destiny that because of greedy little activision they wanted to get their paws on it and make it what they wanted they wanted to rush it out they wanted it to have to be done i don't care how long it takes you to make a game it's great i will wait for it does not matter yeah um yep. but and, and I, I hope that's the statement we get is we can make the game we want to make destiny 3 is going to be the destiny that should have been since the get-go. It should have been. This is the 10-year game right here. That was like the that was such an anticipated game for the the next gen uh, or what is current gen now. That was the like the most hyped game. Um, yeah. Everybody wanted this this online multiplayer console game. Yep. Uh, MMO shooter. Everything we saw from it, like all these different planets, and then like it comes out and what we had like four. There's and yeah and even even in Destiny too, it's like. Six, but four of them are the yeah. same planet. <laughs> like, right. Like, we had the, the four planets, 
And on those planets, you had like one of three enemies mm -hmm. uh, types. There's still and only like those... three or four types. I think there's actually still only three. Like there's variants yeah. of the same three, but there's still a core three. That's That just blows me away from everything that we were kind of promised that. And I know this is, you know, kind of bringing up stuff that's, you know, five years old. old at this point. But it still hits right here. It, it, right. It, it ties back into, okay... This this could we don't know to what extent was Activision's doing, but uh, from what I saw, um, from what I've seen um, on places like Reddit, uh, people at Bungie are like popping bottles of champagne, like they are so happy to be rid of Activision and to finally be able to create what they want to make. Wait, say it one more time. Uh, the the employees with Bungie yeah. are so excited to be yeah. you know kind of done you know parted with Activision. Oh, oh, I'm there, sure. You know, yeah. So I think that says a lot yeah. that, you know, there there are employees like throwing parties at work because they know that they can finally they can make, make the game they, they want to do. They, want to. they can right. finally make the game they want to. And you know what? I, and I don't care what they do. I, I at this point like if it wasn't for this split, I would have had no hope for Destiny 3. No hope yeah. at all. Like at, at all. Because of this split, I actually have more hope for this game than I have probably any other Destiny game. It doesn't, and it doesn't even exist yet. There's no thought of it at this point. But yeah. even if they don't call, I don't care what they call. They don't want. To, I mean, I want them to make the game that Destiny was supposed to be at the very least. Right. That's what I want, and I think we can get that. And I, I know that they said that they're um, they're they're continuing their current path of uh, of content, right? So they're they're going to keep working on on what they've already announced, but they're this change kind of kind of uh, paves the way for, yep. for what's to come. So whether that's sticking with Destiny 2, um, and who knows, I, I know we talked about the, the character transfer earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they come up with a, a better way to, you know, do that from Destiny 2 to 3. Um, now if we I, just I get BioWare to split from EA. Right. If we Yeah, we just need to, like, get all these different companies, <laughs> like, split, split off from their, their producers. They should too. come together. Um, BioWare, Bungie, Anthem... Destiny, Anthem. That's Bioware's game that's being published oh, by EA. Oh, sorry, that's, I thought you were talking like. Um, that's, that's why I was saying those two. Companies. Need to, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, because you're not excited for that, right? I am. I'm very excited for Anthem. I'm very excited for Anthem and very scared for Anthem at the same time because okay. Bioware makes great games. And I am super stoked to play it because of that. EA sucks, and I'm super terrified to play it because of that. Is it Bioware? Yeah. You question me? I didn't. I like. I knew it was EA, but um, yeah. Bioware is making it. That was their okay. big game. Gotcha. Okay. And because they're doing a uh, a beta in a couple weeks too, right? Mm, probably. Once. I mean, the game comes out in like a month. It's like February twenty second when it comes yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's February something. I know they've got. And like some, that's uh, supposed to be the next Destiny. There's just notice how little hype is around it right now, though. How often do you hear of Anthem? I mean, I've seen a few things, but not you know. Not nothing too. It's crazy. weird, isn't it? It's weird. It is. Um, bring it, bringing it back to um, th this split between Activision and, and mm -hmm. Bungie. I really hope that this kind of leads to Blizzard doing the exact same thing, because I, I feel like since oh I, with Activision, I okay, 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 with okay. Activision. Again, I don't know to what extent Activision has a say in uh, Blizzard's. Um, uh, development cycles, I, but I, I've seen some changes that, like eight eight point one, uh, what? I'm not talking about Heroes, Tim. Nope. I bet that what? damn handheld game of Diablo is Activision's idea. <laughs> How much you want to bet? Yeah, they're behind that who, shit. Who knows? Who knows? It's them. Um, they put that guy on stage, and he made him feel terrible. Damn you, Activision. No, the fans were shitty for that. We oh, no, yeah, the no, 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 I know, for that. I know, I know, the fans definitely, I mean, the people should not do that. That's to just be able a to, thing. Yeah, uh, I know that people don't, people want Diablo 4 and they don't want this handheld. It's okay to try new things, but yeah, they, they should have prefaced it. And who knows, maybe there was supposed to be a Diablo 4 announcement like we talked about however many podcasts ago. <laughs> um, actually, I think it was just our last one. <laughs> it probably was. Ago, and it, it feels like a long time ago. Um... <laughs> It actually was. Damn it. Was it really? That's funny. That's yeah, it was. Better. That's even better. Um, anyways, um, so we've, we've got World of Warcraft who had uh, their most recent patch, 8.1, that did not receive. Um, really? Yeah, it was not well received at all. We've got Heroes of the Storm that 
or people are kind of worried about because you know they've backed off uh, a lot of their development. I heard it was like ninety nine percent. I don't think it's that much. I heard from a reliable source it was like ninety nine percent. Okay, I don't think it was that much. I have a guy on the able to operate. You don't. <laughs> Um, so they, they got rid of like their pretty much their esports programs for <laughs> for heroes because um, they got rid and, of ninety nine percent of their staff. Yeah, and we already talked about Diablo, Overwatch. We haven't. I don't think we've seen a whole lot there. Uh, we're we're uh, we're getting back into Overwatch League here in about a month. So I don't. I haven't seen a whole lot there other than like, you can buy a season pass and there's a there's a lot of money in esports with Overwatch, but I don't think I've seen any Activision influence, um, the, at least that comes to mind. Hearthstone either. I think Hearthstone's kind of been the same from what we've seen previously. Um, but yeah, still, I, yeah. I hope that M- Mike, uh, Mike Morheim, uh, I don't know if we talked about that um, at all, but he's he's leaving the company entirely. Uh, ben Brode, the guy that was behind Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Yeah, he left, left already. The company. So there's, yeah. yeah, and he's work- He's actually working on that Marvel game. I saw with that. His, uh, new studio. That, yeah. So there's there's a lot of big names leaving ble- uh, Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard. <laughs> Blizzard. Um, so, and that kind of worries me. So I wonder how much of that is from because all these big names have left after Activision, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of merged with with Blizzard. So uh, I'm not, I'm not too happy to see that happen. And it, who knows, could all be coincidence. It's just time for them to move on to different projects. Mike Morham is ready to retire. I get that, but I hope with what Bungie's doing, we get to see that with Blizzard. And Blizzard can make the games that they want to again. Without any, uh, what is that? Bla- oh, Blazard emote. Nice. Blazer. Whatever. Don't Blazard. question my spelling. Okay, I suck at these. That's things. okay, Tim. I, I, tr- I, I try sometimes, that. and that's what matters. Overwatch doesn't earn enough money. Put some ads on maps. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know. um, I mean, that's probably their most profitable right now. I mean, I know they get you know millions in, in monthly subs from uh, from WoW, but all the money that esports brings in through Overwatch is huge. Um, so the with all the success that we saw from just season one of Overwatch mm-hmm. League, and they they added what eight new teams? Sure. I, I don't think I see. Where's that the fam team? Soon. Where's that at? What's team. going on? You know how much money it costs to start. Just a do it, team. Trevor. Just no, do we it. Don't, we don't have. Go get a loan. We don't have the skill. Do it. We, we don't have the money. How do you know though? We've never all played it together. We might be the best team in existence. Mm, mm. Look doubtful. I mean, doubtful doesn't mean not. So just saying. All right. Yeah. Fair enough, Tim. Fair enough. Got you there. So maybe to, to kind of wrap up the, the Bungie Activision thing. It's what, good news. What do you think, what kind of changes do you think we would see from uh, either future Destiny 2 or like a, a new something with Destiny 3? I think what, we're actually going to get a story, think? like a good, solid story in destiny um i th- okay I th- if, if if this comes to flourishing right like the the split's already done but like if they decide to do a destiny 3 i think it'll be way better i think it'll be the again we will get the destiny game that they wanted to create from the get-go and i hope they say it's going to take time i hope they take their time because now they can now they don't have some jerks breathing down their necks about this game sure so uh, and honestly from bungie what else could we really expect out of them other than a next destiny-esque type game right that's their title they took they how often does a company leave like the the publisher and take the ip with them i mean it, it didn't have with kojima that's for sure right um i don't i think they're they're not legally allowed to like it's just like um within any company if you come up with an idea inside that you work company. at this company mm-hmm. it is their idea so they made it a point to take that title with them Yep. And that's a big thing right there. That's a very big point to make. So I think the next step for them, I think what they need to do is kill Destiny 2. Uh, don't kill Destiny 2. I have so much time in Destiny right, 2. Right, no right. one cares anymore about that game. It's dead. It's been dead almost since launch. Um, sure. So. And we had fun with it. We like, did. At launch, and we did. At launch, it was fun. It it's just, the it's it, the, um, the the cycle of the game that right. gets frustrating. Um, the, um, right, it is. It's, it when is. they first launched the raids, I think that's when it kind of fell off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so kill it off. Work on Destiny Three. Tell us you're working on Destiny Three, um, and that and that you're, you're going to make the game that you were supposed to make. And I would love for them to come out and talk about how much little, like how much they actually had to kill their own yeah. game for. Like, I would love to. Hear I don't statements. know if there's any legalities I'm behind sure that. I'm sure there though, is. Like, 
but yeah, I still want to hear same it. Same reason that we haven't heard anything about Kojima and Konami and all that, yeah. but also just from a right. So hopefully one, hopefully that's. I mean, from Bungie, that's all I can expect at this point. That's all I would want is a the the Destiny game I was promised back in 2014 or whatever. Okay, so you just want more story. Um, you want the the, the exploration. Be expa- yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the it, gameplay yes. to be expanded into not just okay, drop here, yep. run through this map and, and shoot MMO a bunch of enemies in your right. shooter game. Right. The shooting mechanics not- were perfect in that game. They got that down. Shooting in Destiny was beautiful yeah i just want the game to go with it yeah i agree with that yeah, the the story and the the quests all felt pretty empty yep, yep. Um, and it I, was i'm not a multiplayer person myself but i uh, you could probably speak to what you thought of the multiplayer on that i mean crucible i like crucible i like multiplayer in general i mean i didn't really feel i mean multiplayer is multiplayer you can't really expect anything from multiplayer other than sure yeah, shoot them up so i had fun with the crucible um, okay. I think they could be creative about some things. Um, I think it'd be neat to have uh, on-world PvP versus just Crucible PvP. Kind of like, okay. like that's that, that's kind of stuff I would want to see. So like uh, like you <laughs> like you uh, you drop down on a map like mm-hmm. say uh, like a battle royale. So you are well, you, uh... <laughs> well, I mean, yes, exactly. But you know, you're doing quests and things while you're trying to do like yes, right. exactly. I just think. It'd but yeah, that'd be. Yeah. I think it'd be a good time. I, I think that. they can make a massive MMO shooter, and I think it, I think Bungie, without people down their throats, can can make it happen. Cool. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see more of that too, because I I enjoyed, um, like uh, Cipher mentioned, I enjoyed it for about a month, and even when we that was one of the first games we did our big review on. Yes. And we we gave it a good score we because did. it was fun. It was great. It, it was great time. to play together. Um, but then it just you beat it and you're like, oh. Um, I use fancy words in that review, like cacophony, or whatever. It's great. We, uh, yeah, yep. Cacophony was cacophony used. Cacophony was a word. I used it. Yep. <laughs> you used it, but you didn't write it. I that's didn't. for sure. That's, well, I, I wouldn't mean. have. Uh, I wouldn't have uh, written that either. <laughs> that is out, outside my wheelhouse. No. Um, so I, I think we we can definitely expect big things from Bungie in the future. Hopefully from Blizzard too, but I guess we'll we'll find out later this year. Um, moving on to maybe the, the second part, and this one's going to be more, um, kind of more up in the air. Th- this one isn't really, uh, Very much there's so. nothing substantiated for, for, for this. So we were kind of talking before we started the podcast about, we, we can't really believe that these consoles have been around for, you know, five going on six years. Uh, and now we, we actually have to start thinking there's going to be a new console coming. Mm-hmm. And from what I've heard, this is kind of going to be the the last console cycle before we kind of go full um full stream based at least for for a while so to to kind of start with that i i want to start with with microsoft mm-hmm. so we know that microsoft has seen some great success with game pass i think that is their bread and butter it's, that is such a great idea mm-hmm. 10 bucks per month and you're you're playing so many different games on a on a rotating basis, and some of those just, are like new. Yeah, I mean, you get to play their their Microsoft exclusive games day one mm-hmm. for ten dollars per month. It is Netflix on on gaming, but done it right. Is. It is. It's fantastic. I think there's a lot of things I'm not a fan of of Microsoft or things that maybe they don't they don't do that great. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm I I know how to you know run things i'm just as a consumer there's some things that i don't really enjoy and not all the, the games the are game, great right right not all the games are great but for someone to have that that flexibility of okay i can't afford to buy these 60 dollars games when they exactly. come out or you know, the the people that we see coming to gamestop and they can really only buy the you know the uh, a couple of maybe the 10 20 games and right. they have to wait a while until the games drop that low to even experience it this is perfect for, right. for at least some of the games. They, they don't get to experience everything, but they, right. they have quite a few titles on there. It's not something like for myself, right, who buys the games I want when they come out. And it's not meant for someone like myself. I don't think it was meant for someone like myself. Right. It's meant for exactly the type of people you describe. People, like, we, we work some, we, we've seen people come in all the time who couldn't afford a new game, or they buy a new game, come back and give it back and go get a new game. And, like, and I'm not talking new game. I'm talking, like, an old game, right? This right. is great because now it's 10 bucks a month. As long as you have internet, 
you have, I mean, a lot of games at your fingertips. Not not all of them are great. Some of them are terrible. Some of them are really good. Some of them are brand new. Like, yep. there's a mixture there. And I know, like, a lot of the Resident Evil games on there, and those are freaking great games. Like, there's a lot of games on yeah. there that are worth $10 a month. Yeah. And it's it's uh, gaming as a service is going to be the future, I think. Uh, as far as um, we're going to be streaming games, I think... Phys- Physical will hang on for quite a while. I don't see physical games going away, but I definitely see more of a heavy influence mm-hmm. for digital um, and, and streaming as a, or gaming as a service. You know uh, Shadow? That you, you subscribe to. You huh? ever heard of Shadow? Shadow? No. So I, I, I post this a few times, so I'll probably remind you. I'll kick it into your head. I know this is kind of a little off topic, but this brings into the streaming service really well. Shadow is a company who will send you a little box. And I know, sometimes you don't even need the box, right? And it is, yeah, a, I know what it is like $30 to $40 a month, and you have a full-fledged gaming PC. And right. you can play it from your box that they give you. Then if you're like, oh, well, I need to play on my TV, as long as you have a smart TV that you can hook up something with, boom. You can play it on your TV. You can play it on your <laughs> smartphone. You can run a full-fledged Windows on your MacBook and literally yeah. easily switch between the two. So you have a gaming PC on your MacBook a full t- running like 1080 graphics. And then sure. it's all streamed. It's all done through online. So as long as you have a stable internet connection, you would barely ever notice. The, um, uh, Linus Tech, I don't know if you know who Linus is. He does a, he has a YouTube channel. Great, great YouTube channel. Um, okay. He went over there. And he, he, he likes to be skeptical of things, but he likes to check out neat things. And I watched a yeah. video of him messing with, dude, it is insane. Like, yeah. that is a really big next step, if you ask me, at least for gaming PCs. Because who can chug out, like, three grand for a high-end PC all the time? You can't. And they no. constantly upgrade this thing. Forty dollars a month, and if something's newer comes out, they help upgrade it and get it into that step. Like okay, and and that's awesome. I, I think that's a again, gaming as a service is going to be our future. Mm-hmm. Um, I think PlayStation definitely needs to get on on something similar to where they have. I'm not saying they have to do the exact same thing, mm-hmm. but I I think that's a fantastic direction to go in. Mm-hmm. I don't use Game Pass myself mm-hmm. uh, just because. The Xbox isn't my console of choice currently, but if PlayStation did a thing to where I could pay 10, 15 bucks a month and I got their exclusives day one, sign me the fuck up right now. They have something, I, I w- but it's not very good. No, it's not. Um, I know what you're referring to. It's like PlayStation um, Now or something, and it's yeah, it's but it's got it's like retro uh, games though. Well, it's there's not, not like, just um, retro. There are good games on there. Are PlayStation Three games? There? Right? there there might even oh, be PS Four okay. games on there, but. The, the quality when you play them is not good because it's literally you're playing that game through a stream as to where on Xbox oh, you're sure. downloading the game and playing it, right? Correct. So if you're yeah, trying yeah. to play a game there and your internet goes out, done. And you're done, okay. And yeah, so, it's uh, stuff something like that. that Cypher just mentioned too. Looks like there's a, a games in games in a box service. Uh, they, they ship you retro games. And last gen uh, games for forty five bucks a month. That's kind of neat. E- even that, like even something that that's physical, mm-hmm. everything's going subscription based. Mm-hmm. Like you know, Disney's starting their own streaming service. It's just it's just the the way that we're going to see things done. Did the PlayStation Classic system that came out recently? Did that have Resident Evil Two on it? No, oh. just one. Okay, yeah, never mind. Anyway, yeah, it, it wasn't very good from what I heard. Either. Yeah, I heard it was terrible. So I'm I'm a I love my PlayStation. It's definitely my console of choice. But the fact that Xbox has this fantastic Game Pass program, mm-hmm. I would love to see that implemented on on the PlayStation side of things. And even on we, we even see a little bit of this with Nintendo, even though I I don't think it's handled very well to where you pay twelve bucks for the year or whatever it is, and we get new NES games every month. Yeah, and it that's that's, uh, that's fantastic. That's great. And there's me personally I'm not. I'm not a big NES gamer. I'd much rather see some SNES games on there. Um, if they day. did that, like, give me Chrono Trigger, give me um, a Secret of Mana, um, Super Mario World. Mm. Brings back some of those classic uh, Super Nintendo games. You don't even have to do. I don't know. I, I won't even get into <laughs> Virtual Console at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm kind it's, of sick it's, of it's being dead. disappointed with that. It's. It's just not happening. Earthbound, yeah, Earthbound would be a, another another great one. So, I think uh, I, I've repeated myself multiple times. Streaming or gaming as a service will be the future. I just hope Nintendo and Sony can kind of get on board with that. All right, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Leo's saying he doesn't really like the PlayStation now either. It's just not very good. 
Yeah. Like we shouldn't be paying for their uh, their peer to peer internet. The stuff they have right now isn't worth it. Well, so and we're talking Nintendo, is that right? I'm assuming that's what that I'm was. I'm guessing so. So Nintendo yeah. service is how much a year? It's like twelve bucks. So it's twelve bucks a year for the. Whole, I mean, compared to fifty or sixty dollars for PlayStation and Xbox. I mean, what do you expect, right? I mean, and theirs is and their theirs games, is also different. Well, it's just theirs like, is different because <laughs> it's bundled in. Right. Right, right. You're not paying extra yeah. for their NES games, right? It's, it's, Correct. It's, 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 it's bundled hey, into their online. Service. Thanks for being a subscriber. You get these, um, as opposed and, to Xbox Live right. Gold, where you pay sixty bucks a year. Right. But then, if you want the uh, the Game Pass, it's an additional ten. Not too much, or or ten dollars. Well, let me back up. Sixty dollars per year for a year of Game Pass or of Xbox Live Gold. And then 120 for right. a year of Game Pass, so right. 180 bucks versus 12, or 12 or 20 dollars, whatever. whatever it is. Either way, it's much it's cheaper. It's some, It's something low. Right. It works out to be like a dollar and 33 cents a month. Right. I think it's super cheap compared to what it is. I mean, I look. I, I we did a whole podcast on this, and I'm sure we're not going to do one now about m- thoughts on their cost of their their service and stuff. But I like having. Mario and Mario 3 and Zelda and all these games at my fingertips whenever I want them. Like, I am a classic NES person. I love those games. Um, sure. So I'm okay with that. And I would love to see other ones get implemented, like SNES and all that stuff, like, for sure. But I'm not going to harp on it. The My only issue with the, the, the paid service for them is we have to use their app to communicate with. Other than that, for what it is, whatever. Right. So, so with that being said, with with kind of talking about the, the gaming as a service, where it is right now. Right. Um, and I think we, we might have even touched on this previously, but there's an Xbox Project Scarlet yep. uh, that's in the works for, I believe, a, a rumored 2019 release to where it's going to be a diskless system. Oh, yes. I, yes, yes, yes. So yes, this yes. is the, th- this is not like the, there's a, two others that we'll talk about, but mm-hmm. this is the diskless uh, Xbox. This isn't one. the new Xbox. It's not Xbox. Correct. Two. This is not a next gen, but right. this is a current gen Xbox that I'm sure it'll be. Small, I'm right. sure it'll be like a slim. It's not going to be like an, an Xbox One right. S or anything. Or X. Man, they couldn't have made that any more confusing. It, 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 it spells out Xbox. Um, yeah, but okay, uh, whatever. No, I agree. I, I think I think a digital discless cheaper console is smart. And I think it's a good route to go for what they want to do in the future. Correct. I think it pairs... This this cheap. I assume it, it it's got to be cheaper, right? It, oh not yeah, gonna yeah, people oh, yeah. More for less stuff. Than it is. Yeah, and it'll be small. So, like this thing will be. I imagine small. this. Yeah, I imagine like something extremely small, doesn't take discs, and it's pretty much uh, focused around Game Pass. Yes. Well, that and just it, digital, digital in general. Oh yeah. Well yeah, we'll say digital in general, but it's going to be focused on. I mean, Game Pass is their 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 bread and butter right, right. now. They don't have any exclusives other than Crackdown coming right. out. Well, I take that back. Whatever Halo Infinite or Infinity um, is, is the is the well you got Halo you got Gears of War is coming out this year. Don't you dare forget about Gears is it of War. this year? Yeah, yeah. nice. Um, but are all three of them coming. out I, this I don't year? know. I, I, honestly, I don't know what one I'm more excited about. Five or Tactics? Like I'm a Tactics fan, and they announced that I about lost my mind. I know which one you're most excited for. The fun <laughs> one. Yes, cannot. You wait. want the Gears of War pop? The, the, I can the tell. mobile game is going to be brilliant. Um. But, uh, Dan, now what was I saying? So we were talking stuff. What were we saying? What, were we, what, was, what was it before? Our... The disc list, going digital. Going digital. You're excited oh, for gone. Gears. Oh, uh, exclusives. But, uh, wait, I'm confused. It's gone. It, I, um, it, it, exclusives. You're talking about, yeah, you were talking about Gears. Well, but that about... was like random because you, you said you didn't know what else was coming out and I said Gears. But there's, I was on a train before that and it's just derailed. Sure. And now it's, that is derailed. Um, that, is, that is long gone. But... Uh, does does PlayStation have the EA service? So for some reason I'm still Origin? subscribed. No, uh, I I've been subscribed to this thing for years. And I don't know why, but I have the EA service on Xbox. It's like ten bucks a month, but you it's like their own Game Pass. So EA has their own basically Game Pass on the Xbox where you get all all the older. So you get discounts on any EA games right. you buy. You get like I have a a free trial of Battlefield Five. That's, that's how I was playing it yesterday. As I, right. you get a free like ten hour trial of any of their brand new games that come out, and you get a discount on it if you buy it. Um, so that's another implement implementation of digital. Is you know that you got all these things that, and you get discounts, sure. and it's actually pretty neat. I mean, granted, it's just EA titles, so I mean, you don't have a much 
room to choose from, right? But the digital right. stuff and the discounts is pretty neat. Um, yeah. I, I have, I, we'll get there, and I want to talk about what the next Xbox will be. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good step. I think it's a smart step. It'll be a cheaper step for people who want an Xbox One X. It's not going to be for everybody, but we need to start going in this era. And the sooner people realize that, the better they're going to be. The digital, yep. the digital era, yep. yeah. And it 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 does suck. I I love having that physical collection on my shelves, and not being able to not being able to see that on my system. It kind of bugs me. Like I I just pre purchased Kingdom Hearts three on my PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And my heart kind of broke a little bit mm. because I'm not going to have that up with with the rest of my games. Okay. Um, like I've I've thought about buying just extra like PS4 and Xbox One cases. And you tell you me know, that print, all the time that you just I'm just going to go here right. and get this Xbox case from people. Yeah, I mean it was easier when we worked at GameStop right. because you know just bring home the cases, print out the cover art, and uh, that's going away for sure. Yeah, just so you know. And the, yep, I'll I'll just have to I'll have to live with that. It was a, I mean. How many people buy CDs anymore? No one. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, music's almost all digital. There's, granted, there's, you know, a vinyl comeback. I still buy a few. How often um, do you buy a movie? A movie? All the time. You buy? I do buy movies all the time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically all digital. My whole life, unless it's a collector's edition or something, is basically digital. It's so convenient yeah. to sit on my couch and not have to do anything, not to put a disc in and just be like, yeah. bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. It's lazy as hell, but I love not, not having to, uh, uh, not having to switch. Yeah. It's it's or fantastic not having to get up and like swap out the and, and I'm all about like like collector stuff, right? I still buy my collector. That's that's yeah. never gonna go away. And even if it gets to the point where everything's digital, they'll send you a, a statue with a digital code for the game. Like that's right, that, that's right, what's right. gonna, gonna come to. It's gonna kill off stores like GameStop. Um and well, not to get too uh, off track, but apparently in February, I think there's supposed to be like two buyers that are like supposedly for GameStop. Because Man, no, they need to wait two years. I gave it five years when I left. Um, we're we're gonna have a Tim. We're gonna throw a party. <laughs> we will. We, it's gonna be a great time. I can't wait to, yeah. You know, um, game but uh, out of my it's goodness. just so so. Okay, I, I want to pause on what I'm saying here because it'll go unless we want to get into the next step of what we're talking about. No, uh, no, you're fine. Um, go ahead. So, I think when the next gen comes out for Xbox, I'm, I'm, we're starting Microsoft here. So when yep. then so what's the other name? What's another name that we have? Because we talked about Scarlet and what it's going to be. What's another oh wait, name? so do you do you want to jump into what's coming? Or do you have what, any, do you have something gen? else to talk about Scarlet? By all means, because I don't I'm I mean no 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 I I was just kind of tying in with like Game Pass is great right it makes sense for them to do yeah I mean I imagine it almost being like a it's like their version of a Chromecast in a way you know yeah it's what it like, is to where it, you like you load it up with it'll be this little tiny Xbox that doesn't have a disc and you have Game Pass you've got Netflix you've got Twitch. Yep. All your all your streamable services are just on this little Chromecast. Should it be? Box. Well, are you expecting it to be a Scorpio though, like that that edition, or would like it would have to be right? No, you don't think it's gonna be a Scorpio, uh, like 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 uh, the an, an Xbox One X. No, you think, I do not expect. I, that. I think it'll be an Xbox One X. Interesting. Without I mean, don't get drive. me wrong, that'd be great. I would love to have something discless that I could set up at my streaming, mm -hmm. uh, like my streaming setup here. I don't want to have my. I only have the I've got the two Xboxes, the X that I play on my TV, and then I have my my Halo original Xbox One that I have uh, set up in my room for Netflix and stuff. Right. I don't want to bring that chunky thing down here and try and set it up. Right. I'd love something smaller. Right. No, and I, and uh, that makes sense. Um, and I just I well, my point is like, without a disc drive, the Xbox One X itself could be small. Like, why would they sure. want to go backwards in power? All these games that are coming out, all the, the Gears 5, they're all going towards the power of the Xbox One X. And there are a lot of games sure. that don't perform well if it's not on Xbox One X. Black Ops is actually kind of one of them. It's meh on a regular Xbox One. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they'd want to go backwards. I think they'd be like, okay, Scorpio is $400 or $500. We'll make it $400 with a discless drive. And it's small. Sure. Compact. As big as my phone. Probably not, but still. Um, okay. I mean... I, I'm definitely okay with that. I was thinking more on the affordability side. Like, okay, here's here's an Xbox One S. It still does HDR. Um, who knows? Uh, I I love the fact that we're in. I was gonna I was gonna wait to touch on this, but I'll just say it now. Yeah. I love the fact that we're getting into tiered systems. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever a new console generation comes, we've got using this one as an example. We have got the Xbox One, 
Xbox One S mm -hmm. and the Xbox One X. Right. Uh, same with uh, PlayStation um, 4, Slim, and Pro. Yep. I think it's great that they have these different models of the same system mm -hmm. that allow people to choose what they want to get into. Um, and this is actually, I agree 100%, because that's the best part. What's your affordability? You could Like, hey, you can't afford this $500 system? No problem. Get this $300 system and play with your friends anyway. Yep. Like, same thing. Uh, don't forget, Microsoft is testing. It's actually going to be in beta this year their streaming service for their games to where I can play an Xbox game on my phone. Uh, yes, um, Project X Cloud. Oh, is that what that's called? See, I didn't know that. I just knew it was a, it was. A I had that lined up in my notes. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get ahead of you. Oh, no, no, you're fine. I, it doesn't really tie into a specific console. Um, um, before, yes. before we dive into those two, those two models, I wanted to touch on what Cypher said here. Mm -hmm. um, take, uh, when, by going all digital, mm -hmm. it, it definitely makes it a more finalized choice, right? Okay. Um, it's not something you can you can't trade it into a store. Correct. Um, you can't sell it to a friend. Let Correct. a friend borrow it. That is that is yours. Um, yep. So there there is. I, there, uh, you are losing something there. Steam does it already. Does it not? PC games are already there. Right or wrong? As as far as the the refund process. As far as a finalized choice at this point. Steam well, will I, let I you refund extent, things at times, mm -hmm. but very rarely. So PC's been there for years. How often do you go out that, and physically buy a PC game? And even if you do, you can't return it because it's usually a code. Correct. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, the, the fact that you know PC games are already at that point where you can't refund it, at least to, to a degree. Like you can, I forget what their, what their time frame is. You can't have like more than an hour played or something like that on there. Right, right. And it has to be within a certain time frame, which is fair. And you can get a like, refund they don't want from you Microsoft. Like you can, you, you cannot. You can, you can, you can. It's, oh yeah, it's we the, did that. We did that with something. Yeah, like you can. It's not an easy process, and they don't just let you do it willy nilly. A lot of times, it's like once a year or something like that. Realistically, it's what it is. But I mean, that's. I get it's a finalized choice, but yeah, let's let's. I, I got things I need to say about other things, and we'll get okay. There, but well, real, real quick before yeah. we do that, then. I wanted to say Doritos also mentioned that uh, he, he wishes that all Xbox titles were Play Anywhere so he could play with uh, uh, play on PC with you, his console. You know, phones. my guess is Microsoft thinks the same thing, but it's more of a publishing thing than it is a Microsoft sure. thing. Sure. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, they can do it with their games. Resident Evil 7's um, on there. Did you know that? I could play Resident Evil 7 on my PC. I had um, no idea. It doesn't have cross... Resident Evil 7 doesn't have cross progression, though. At least it didn't. Oh, okay. Um, but, like, Gears, I could play Gears on my PC, you could play it on your on Xbox, and we play at the same time. Yeah. You know, and so. I would love that, because, like, when we talked about Fallout, I wanted to play on PC, you wanted to play on Xbox, and we, we ended up just going Xbox, because you're the you're the Fallout person. Right. Like, we're, like, I'm just gonna... I am, but you know what's great about that, is if that, if Fallout or those games become more like that, where they have more cross-progression, cross-play, you know damn well I'm gonna play more on my PC than an Xbox. The only reason I yeah. play on my Xbox because that's where most of my friends are. That's where that's where most of my people that I play with have it. But if right. I can play them on my badass PC, I'm gonna yeah. do that. But mm -hmm. I don't because I just it's where they're at. Yep, I agree. So hopefully we'll see some of that uh, either with the the current cycle as it kind of comes to an end, or maybe something to help kick mm -hmm. off the the next gen. Uh, speaking of. We, we don't have a whole lot of news on the next gen, but we do have, at least for Microsoft, we have two project names. Yep. Uh, we have Project Lockhart and Project Anaconda. Um, and really all we know is that it's kind of like how it's set up right now to where we have the S and the X. Right. Um, to where the Lockhart is going to be the affordable one and the Anaconda is the, the powerful one. And I think launching these systems side by side would be great. Because we, we haven't seen that before. We've always seen... The, ah. the main console. The, the Xbox uh, I mean, 360 had an Elite version come out with it as well. At the same time, yep. there is a one of them came with a bigger hard drive. It was black, and it came, or it was something, or maybe it was still white. It might have still been white, but one of the Xbox 360s, if you look it up, was cheaper than the other. One of them came with a bigger okay. hard drive, and I think it had uh, there was something else with it because then PlayStation also had one that was backwards compatibility, one that wasn't. And well, I'm thinking more of like at, like at launch, um, there's no performance difference. Like they might have like a larger hard drive or something like that, but I'm thinking more performance to where. So you think these two have different performances as well? 100. percent I think we're looking. I think with this, we're going to see something like a a slim, or and a, and a Scorpio to where we're going to have one that is 
They, and they might both be 4K capable. I, I don't know what we're looking at at this point. But having one that is, you know, higher performing um, <clears throat> and then one that is more affordable but doesn't perform to, to that degree. Right. No, and that makes sense. And, and I'd be okay either way. I don't care what it is. One of them might have disk drive. One of them might not. That might be the only difference. Who knows? Yep, exactly. So other than that, we don't really have a whole lot. Um, but with us getting into the everyone... Everyone has already said that we're kind of heading towards the end of this this phase right. of, of these consoles' lives. I think it was last year in May, uh, someone from Sony said that uh, the PS4 is entering its final cycle, um, or final phase of its mm -hmm. cycle. So with that, we know that Microsoft is in the same boat. Mm -hmm. we, we know that these consoles always come out at the same time. They, always, they have to compete head-to-head. -head. Right. Um, I don't think we'll see anything from Nintendo to where they release something new. They just release the Switch. Mm -hmm. But I still think ah. we could see a, a newer version of the Switch. Yeah. They, so... Yeah. W Go ahead. <laughs> what I want on Xbox. Here's what I want. Uh -huh. I want yep, them to in do... this Xbox and next gen. Yep. yep. I want them to do the damn... The, the freaking thing that they were going to do with the Xbox One and everyone shunned their ass for it. Do you understand how many problems that would have solved that people would have just shut up and let them do what they were going to do? You wouldn't need a higher performing Xbox because they were going to use the power of the cloud to make the performance of the system better. They were going to make it to where if you buy one game, you can share it with five friends so not everybody needs to freaking play it. There were so many good things going to happen with that always online system that everybody cried and complained about because not everybody has online access, blah, 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 blah. Even though 99% of the Xbox Ones out there all connect to the internet within 24 hours. So, you know, there's that thing. But who cares about statistics when you're looking at this thing, right? We always got to look at the 1%. That would have been such a big game changer on so many different levels i remember watching a video on crackdown when that was originally announced a long time ago of how they were mm -hmm. going to use the cloud computing power to work side by side with your console power and just like it would just everything would just work in tandem yeah. together to make games look better you didn't need to have the best system in the world to have the best power on it because it was going to use the cloud to do it as well there were so many good the family sharing thing was such a great concept now we can game share by cheating the system, more or less, is what we're doing at this point, right? right. But that's only mm -hmm. to me to you. Imagine doing that with five people, but you could still have your oh, yeah. like like. There's so many aspects. I can't use some of the features on game sh that the way we're game sharing that I wish I could because there's a game there's a feature on when like let's say this was set as my home Xbox, right? There's a feature yeah. that makes it to where I can download a game from my app from my home from anywhere. Oh, like yeah. I can't do that. Um, so because it's not your home because it's not my home console. So I just that oh I'm so mad. When when they when people were in such an uproar and they made fun of Microsoft about it, and, and to the point where Microsoft changed because the people wanted what they wanted, that's fine. You don't realize they don't realize what we missed out on because of it. Yeah, like it sucks, right. but it shouldn't have changed. They should have just let it happen. And who knows? Maybe maybe this time around um, that'll be different. I hope they just do it, and if people complain, they just do it anyway. And I think that's a hard thing to do because even if you know that it's going to be for the, the betterment of the consumer, that doesn't mean that they're going to accept it any easier, you know? I, I'm not arguing. I, I want what you want. I'm not arguing arguing against you. Um, <laughs> real, reality is often disappointing to him. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, and, and, they're, and they're going to complain. Said. Yeah, exactly. It's going. People will complain. They will. Especially if they, and I hope they do it, and people will complain. They're like, no. You Ooh. hope they do it. You hope they complain. I, I no, I hope oh, maybe a little bit, and I hope they get slapped in the face. Um, but I hope they just do what they needed to do to begin with. Sure, that's all I'm saying. They need to do that. That console was it. I would also okay. be interested to see a modular console. I think that'd be, and I think that's kind of maybe not modular, but I think that's where we're headed to. Where I I think that this will be the last. At least for a long time, we're going to at least not see a standard cycle of okay. Every five years, we get a new, um, a, a new piece of hardware. I think this will be the last one that we see in a while, maybe 10, 10 years or so, because everything is going to be going streaming, or we we upgrade these consoles down the road, kind of like what we have to where, okay, we we launched the PS4 for a while. Now we got the PS4 Pro. Right. Still takes the same software, but you know improved capabilities. 
I think that we're going to see that, but just to a, uh, the longevity is going to be a little more stretched yeah. out this time. So other other than um, on always online, what else do you want to see from this uh, from the, uh, this Xbox uh, Anaconda and Lockhart? So I, I thought we were going to get a lot more VR when it came to Scorpio, and we didn't. We actually got none. Because um, they actually brought up VR in their press conference when Scorpio first got announced. That it was going to be that Bethesda VR was a big thing. Never came yeah. to Floration at all in Microsoft. Yeah. At all. Um, and I believe there's a reason for that. I actually, that's the question I asked Phil Spencer about when I got to ask him a question there. And he kind of laughed at me. Um, but it was okay because I understood where he was coming from. But uh, it, I, don't, I want to see, see HoloLens with the next xbox i want to see that cool. kind of incorporation but because like let's face it as far as performance goes we're getting nitty and gritty or gritty nitty gritty about everything right visually yeah. it's pleasing it looks good how much of a difference can you really get from what we have now i mean you just right. it, it's getting to the point where it looks good. so other than that I, I i don't know i don't know what else i could ask for it other than kind of small gimmicky stuff or my always online things where I can share games with you and everybody else that I have friends with. Like, I don't know what else I can think about. I mean, better visuals. Sure. But like, uh, I don't think it, I don't think at this point, at least for me, I don't think it's graphics. It's fucking loading times, man. Yeah. It's fucking like, I know that I'll sounds dumb. That. No, I'll give you that. That's a good one. Even, even on the Scorpio, um, not even loading times, just navigating, navigating the, the menu. menu. Oh my God. Why is it so damn laggy? Like this is supposedly like one of the most powerful consoles out there right now, but I, I hit I hit you know like down on my mm-hmm. analog stick, and I this sounds dumb when you when you say it out loud, but it takes it like you know half a second or you know a full second to it's actually, actually navigate around the menu. I don't think it's so much the hardware as much as it's the software though. I think Is a lot it, of that has to do more with the software that whatever oh, it's running. Sorry, on. yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's not that the the system can't handle. It's just the way that the, the software. My, sucks. I don't know if it's Microsoft OS or whatever they mm-hmm. they call it, but um, why is my Xbox still is, running on freaking Vista? <laughs> right, that's how it feels. Right. Like that console is so laggy. I hate having to turn that thing on. I can see that. Yeah, and you know the the loading times are definitely they can be an issue. But I I get it. I'm I'm not saying we need no loading times whatsoever. Yep. Um. So I, I'm not saying we need to get rid of them completely. Right. But some of these games do take like how long did it take uh, um, uh, Fallout seventy six to load in sometimes? Like oh you were it, there yeah forever. no it it could take it it definitely took time like uh oh my god Battlefield you should have seen me yesterday I was flipping yeah. out about the Battlefield load screens oh my god they were so bad <laughs> yeah it's bad. So, I think as far so we know what we w- what we would want from mm-hmm. the next gen Xbox. When do you think we will f- one get an announcement and then two get a release? Announcement twenty twenty release twenty twenty one. We'll get an announcement hmm. this year of Scarlet. They'll show it off. That's what we're gonna get. Um, mm-hmm. We'll get an announcement of the next gen console in twenty twenty, and we'll get a release in twenty twenty one. Now we might get it in twenty twenty, but I I don't I I. I <laughs> I, I think it. I I'm going to go a, a year ahead of what you expect. I think we'll get an announcement this year, mm-hmm. and I think we see it release holiday 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I just would. I, I, I think I'm just trying to like picture them announcing, "Hey guys, so we have a cheap Xbox One X." I'm not saying they're announcing. Then we got the same this time. Xbox super mega thing that's the next generation what one do you want i think we could see honestly i could see the xbox uh scarlet i could see that announced like within a month or so i don't think they're gonna do something like this isn't gonna really be, you think like, they're gonna announce the scarlet this soon that soon i don't well i what i'm saying is i don't think it's going to be something that they announce at e3 maybe like, we see it at their to... little xbox conference that they did like they did last year because yeah. they did like a little conference at they... xo it'll be xo 19 yeah something like that um so move, I, we're kind of getting yep, 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 yep. Uh, a little bit behind here. So moving into uh, PlayStation. Yep. We don't have anything on PlayStation. Other than... Like no, no real... Yeah. There's no rumors. We've had... I, I, the article I read, they talked about... I mean, there's articles saying it could come out as soon as this year. And then there's other... They, we got a three-year window, Betty. That's what, that's what we got. <laughs> there's yeah. some that say 20, 2021 was the initial thing by someone from Sony. Someone saying 2020. And other people are saying, but they want to get ahead of the game. There's a rumor they're going to start this year. 
three year window. I mean that that would be pretty crazy. Don't get me wrong, but I don't I don't see that. So <laughs> it's out tomorrow. There's a, a few there's a few things about uh, PlayStation that I won't say worry me, but they just kind of have me baffled in a way. So we know that we're getting to the the end of the cycle, yep. which is probably why we haven't. We we let me back up. PlayStation isn't coming to E3, which is a huge deal. Yep, it they is. Also it's a very do, big deal. That's huge, um, because that hasn't happened before. Right. Um, and they also didn't do their PlayStation experience uh, right. last month either. So they they said that it's because they they didn't have anything new to announce. I believe that one hundred percent actually. And I I believe that as well because. These games that they've already announced, those are probably the last ones that we're going to get from that cycle. Well, and they've been talking Which, about these same games for two to three years. Like, every E3 that they've had was these same games. We saw they did these kind same of, games. They, they did kind of back themselves into a corner there. You know, and that's that's how they won E3, won E3 by, you know, having all these huge game announcements for these exclusives. And, you know, Microsoft didn't still doesn't really have anything. Um, granted, I know your Gears and your Halo were coming out this year. That's great. Um, but they just great. don't have anything on this the same level as PlayStation. I mean, it okay, just doesn't compare. To, to each layer, that's fine. I mean, releasing Marvel and God of War last year, two of like the the games that are like that's they're neck and neck for game of the year for for most people. Mm. They're great games. I and have no problem. With both them. both PlayStation exclusives. Anyways, beside the point. Um, it it worries me that we have some huge games that haven't come out yet, and it's I feel like the clock is ticking. Oh, it like, is. There's two. So, there's two that I can think of. Yeah, we're thinking of the same mm-hmm. two. I bet. I bet so. You, uh, I'll name one. You name the other. Last, Last of, of Us two. <laughs> that, that, that's the best one. And then Days yeah, Gone. Yeah, and Death Stranding. Oh. 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 Interesting. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Days Gone comes out in in April, I believe. Does it? It actually has a date. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Dude, that game actually scares February, me but because it, like we hear nothing of it anymore. It's just like dead in the water, yeah. like literally. Um, I don't know. I'm not too worried. But I'm it, sure it's going it to be pushed fun. Back from, but yeah, it got pushed from February to April, and I'm okay with I that. I forgot about that streaming um, completely. Like, you're right. That's actually... Fuck you, That's, that's a big game. Fuck you. Uh, I, com- I mean, Last oh. of Us Last of Us 2 is still bigger, but Death Stranding is right there yeah. behind it. I think Death Stranding is huh? going to be... I, so, so I, 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 I'm I going to enjoy The Last of Us 2 probably a ton. Like, The Last of Us... I, I, the yeah. Last of Us oh, is still yeah. my favorite single-player story game of all time. Like, that game hit me in every emotion that I could have. It was so good. So I can't wait for the second one. But Death Stranding has this just like, I need to know. (laughs) Like, there's so much about it. I need to know. What is happening? Right! Yeah. Like, so both of those worry me because they're they're huge games. And I guess it's a good send-off for the console. But also, Mm -hmm. like, why are you putting all this time and effort into these games? And who knows? They could change it to where... Do you remember when Twilight Princess originally came out and it came out on both the, the Wii and Wii. the GameCube? Yep. Because they wanted they didn't want people to force, be forced right. to buy a Wii right off the bat. Right. I don't see that happening anymore at all. I think that's a, really the only time that we'll see that. That's a, and and um, Death Stranding is a console seller, so if they decide to push that back to PS5... And that's what I'm... So that's what I'm wondering. Because we, we have no idea as far as even a release window. I could see no, them doing no that. No clue. I want hundred. See, but, that, I mean that. I mean that's a console seller. Hands on, down. So the two that I, the two games that I had in mind, I could see them both releasing um, Last of Us Part Two and Death Stranding on the next gen, I don't, or splitting it. I could see them sending off the PlayStation Four with Last of yes. Us Part Two, and then Death Stranding yes. being like, like the the console seller. I agree. Uh, that uh, I could see. Yeah, and I, I'm not saying you know one way or the other. I'm just talking about different possibilities here. It just blows me away that because we don't have information really a whole lot of information on either. Well, and Todd Howard, I mean, this is kind of not changing pace, but kind of changing. Already yeah. made a statement that like Elder Scroll Six was announced, and the current hardware will not support it. Like, oh yeah, like they they already made that like they're they've got tests, they got things. It, it, it is yep. a next gen game, one hundred percent. Yeah, that and Starfield. And Starfield, both of both. those, they're going to be next gen games. So understandable, we know that for sure. Right. Yep. Um, Dorito says they're going to the Last Guardian Death Stranding. Oh I swear, oh. if that happens, I'd like. I'm just going to slowly die. Well, I was going to say I'm going to slowly die every year, but I mean, I'm already doing that. I guess, like we <laughs> Way all. Way ahead of you. Whatever. 
Maybe just at a faster pace. <laughs> um, <laughs> One year from now, you see Trevor just I'll like slowly die goals. faster. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't know. I, I think they're getting, they're putting so much effort into into this game mm-hmm. uh, with at Kojima Productions. Would you be okay with it? 100%. I prefer it. I would prefer it to be on the next generation console. Yeah, could you imagine yeah. that being your release day title? Like, could you imagine, Trevor... You get your PS5 Just having this, and like, new console and, and a collector's edition, Death Stranding edition of it. Yeah. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I would be all over that. Mm-hmm. That is. So I almost, I almost bought the PS4 Pro Kingdom Hearts edition. But if I don't, I don't need another PlayStation. <laughs> no, but if they did one for Death Stranding, absolutely, I I will in a heartbeat. I would do it for I Last actually, of Us too. I don't have a Pro I found yet. A way, I found a way to move my PT from the, the console. Oh, I moved it over to my how'd Pro. you do that? Because I don't need to know. I linked them up with Ethernet cables, and I did like a content transfer. Smart idea. So now I actually have a... I don't need my original PS4 anymore, mm-hmm. which is great. So, because that's the whole reason I held on to it. Are you giving it away? Is that, was that what I'm hearing? <laughs> the PS4 <laughs> giveaway? Don't start this. Don't start this. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what do you want to see from... A, a PS5. What what do you want to see? Less stacks. Less stacks. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just add add an additional layer. Yes. <laughs> um, um. I don't know. Again, I, I want to see. I don't know. I, there's not a, a whole lot that I feel like the PlayStation really needs to improve on. Mm-hmm. I love the interface. Yeah. It's smooth un, as opposed to the uh, the Xbox. My PlayStation Classics back. I miss that so much. Yeah. Like I want to so be able to I play So I think those. for me. For me, I think it's more software. Yeah. Like, I want to see a PlayStation Game Pass. A better PlayStation. They have PlayStation now. It exists. Yeah. And I will... So I'll say Xbox does Game Pass better than PlayStation, but I think PlayStation has the better free titles every month for their online service. Play, I want PlayStation to have just a better online experience. I want their party yeah. system to be better. Like, PlayStation has better exclusives. I, I don't think anyone here would argue with that. Like, uh, de- I don't I mean, think anyone I, would ever dispute that. Like, no. they do. They have better exclusives. And this is going from an yeah. Xbox person. So I don't think the software and the and the visuals are important. Like, they are, but, like, it's not where... That's not the room for improvement that they have, right? Sure. But their online right. services and their security and all that, it sucks compared to Microsoft. Yep. It just does. Yeah, that's what Wait, I would like their, to see. Their improved. security, you said? Yeah. Just because they they got they hacked get hacked by more Wizard often. Squad. They they get they're in their online sort like parties party systems aren't as good. Like well, that was just, the whole reason that they went uh, with the paid service to begin with, too, because you're putting money back right. into that that service because right. it was free for a while. Right. Um, so now that they've had all this was, time to collect all this money from PlayStation Four users, make something that is is more user friendly in terms like it is quicker. It, I'm not saying it doesn't perform better. It does perform User better. User-friendly in what sense? Like, I find navigating the menus in the PlayStation kind of annoying at times. You don't like the, the cross thing? Yeah, I don't like the cross thing at all. Like, it's just... Okay. But, like, party systems in it isn't very friendly. Oh, wait, no, it's not the cross thing anymore, is it? it? Yeah, is, it is. You go down... It was on the PlayStation 3. I, I don't even... I don't know. No, I haven't, it's just like... I don't turn my PS4 on enough, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's just like, it's layered now, I think. But can't you um, go to, to one thing and it's like, oh, now you go down to like, oh, it's a store. Oh, go down. Yeah, on some of them. Right. Like, if you go to if you go over to your game, you can go down and you can see, like, right. your trophies and other people that are playing it. Like, and, um, and uh, like, when you have multiple games, let's say you have 50 games downloaded, and now I don't have that many games downloaded on my PlayStation 4, but, like, don't you have to go over to each and every one? Like, it's, oh, dun, 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 or, like, you know, like... As or you can you have the option to go to your library. Okay, because like the thing There's about the option. thing about Microsoft that makes it easier, even though again it needs to perform better. The the concept behind Microsoft is better. Um, it, it's you got your pins, you got your your like right there, and all yeah. your recent time, right? Like it, it's boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. And if it worked well, it would be really, really quick, and it'd be really good. You could customize the Xbox interface way more than you can the PlayStation interface. Like you can move yeah. all kinds of things around. I actually do have a um, one thing that I'd love to see on on both mm-hmm. both of these systems, both Xbox and PlayStation, Google Home and Alexa. Oh my God! Because they have because Play- Xbox has Cortana, yeah, and it's okay. Well, but it's, yes, cool. Google Google Incorporation would be godly. Yeah, have it tie in just the same thing. The same things we we do now with Chromecast. Just uh, okay, Google, turn on my Xbox. Yes. Um, okay, Google. Um, uh, 
turn on Netflix on my yes. Xbox or what, whatever. Yes. So the little, like, just a tiny thing. Connect 3.0. Oh, my gosh. Just poor just connect. Just poor connect. Um, so real quick. Um, real quickly, or I guess it doesn't have to be real quickly, but moving on to the Switch. Yes. But I, I know that that's not going to be new, like entirely new. Um, what do you expect to see from a uh, the next model of this of the Switch? An OLED screen. Okay. Um, so a better screen. Um, not that the one OLED. O OLED. Yes, sir. They had an OLED okay. screen on a Vita. They can put it on a Switch. Damn it. Oh, did they? Oh yeah. Um, okay, I didn't know that. Um, better battery life. Um, a way for me to play Mario Maker. That's all I need. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Because I, I, I know that there's been, those are some rumors I've seen from like, you know, Wall Street Journal. And Better Joy-Cons. That... What don't you like about the Joy-Cons? The cons? joystick is like when you're playing, Trevor, when you're playing a serious shooter game, it is obnoxiously not good using those Joy-Cons. Like using the, pro the controller. joysticks. All right, and pro I have controller. a Pro Controller. You're right, there's a solution for that. Pro Controller. But, or just make your other one better. I don't know. I I personally really love the I love the feel of the joystick. The, the joystick Granted, when you're playing a serious game is not that great. I wish they would make a. Uh, I like how they do their DSs where they had the 3DS and the 3DS XL. Just because my hand and you might have the same issue. My hands are larger mm -hmm. probably than the the average user, so my hands tend to cramp right, up. Right. 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 Um, because, and it's more so when it's when I'm playing sideways. Mario Kart and yes. I have to turn it sideways. That's when. Like my my thumb my my index fingers get all cramped up, mm -hmm. so that that might be something they could work on. But I, I think it's a great system. It the is the only thing the only few, the few things that I'd want to see improved are the battery life for sure. But even then, I don't play my Switch undocked hardly at all. Right. I just don't take it. I don't. When if I do take it somewhere like my parents' house, I take my dock too. Do you really? Um, yeah. Um, I, I I would love to. Maybe see. I'm trying to think if there's. I'm actually uh, thinking about it. I play my Switch yeah. way more undocked than I do docked. I play really? in handheld mode almost all the time. Very few times do I play it docked. Interesting. Okay. And that that's what's great about the console. Like it, mm -hmm. it's versatile for like whatever any like however anyone wants to play. A lot of games on there. Like I can just sit back, relax on my couch, have a movie on the background on my TV, and just yeah. play my Switch. Like that's fa oh, I'm I'm tired. I need to go lay down in bed. Take my Switch, go lay down in bed, and just sit there. Like yeah, there's, like, no, I'll say that. Um, like I did that a lot with Pokemon. Yeah. Um, when when I was playing Pokemon Let's Go, I did that with that game, but I wouldn't do it for something with Smash. So I guess it all just depends I, on the. I, game I, every time I play in our tournament things or whatever we call them, I've done it in, do in, in, in handheld hand mode. mode every time. Yeah. yeah. Which again brings me back to my joysticks at times, especially when I'm doing my freaking PK Thunder recovery. Those joy cons yeah. suck for that. Yeah. That's why you got to get on the GameCube train, man. Yeah. Yeah. But no, there's not much I'd want from the Switch. I think the Switch, the Switch is probably one of my favorite consoles ever. Yeah. Um, 100%. It's just, it's clever. It's gimmicky, but it's gimmicky in the extent that it's fuck. It's awesome. It works. Very the gimmick for this is yeah. is a is fantastic. It's great, and I yeah, I love it's, it. It's flexible, and I want Mario Maker. Did I mention that yet? Yeah, really. So really, it's uh, I think for both of it, it's it's less hardware and more software right. related. Yeah, we both want Mario Maker. That's what we want. Nintendo, just give it to well, us. Well, I mean, the one for me that I I need is Animal Crossing. Oh, but see, the problem with that is you know you're getting that. Dude, you got trolled oh, so hard, too. That was the biggest troll I think Nintendo's ever pulled off in the existence yeah. of Nintendo. That was rough. Well that done rough. to them. Um, but, like, you know you're getting that. Yeah. And I would buy yeah. Mario Maker on my 3DS if it wasn't piss poorly done and all oh, just mm -hmm. stupid. Yep. But I want... My, like, yeah, Trace, Trace says Metroid. Uh, Hopefully we get some more Metroid news this year. Right, and we know we're getting Metroid. If they would just yeah. give me the Mario guy with a little hat on him and the thing and just image and go away i'd be okay i'd be convinced sweet it's coming one day cool it's coming like oh yeah. god i love mario maker. i had already told you my idea as far as what i'd want instead of a mario maker right oh yes the zelda dungeon creator would be great yep. any kind of creator i'm a creator person i love building things give me those tools let me i love building them publishing them watching people hate them and tell me how much i suck at building them and then i build it again like yeah. Little Big Planet, well, that was like one of my first time getting into something like that was with Little Big Planet. Okay. Which, th speaking of that, I'd love a Little Big Planet four. Um, but I spent hours 
on games like that. I spent days making one map on Little Big Planet, and there, sure. there was someone found an exploit, and it wound up being like if you shot something so many times in a direction, <laughs> the whole map just fell apart. It was hilarious. Perfect. But it, it doesn't matter. I had fun doing it. I yeah. want those. Give me those. Yeah, lot, lots of software related requests. Um, but I, I think I think we're headed in a good direction for for consoles yeah, overall. Yeah. So I, I guess to maybe to wrap things up, uh, congrats to Bungie. We hope to see good things from them. Hopefully Blizzard follows suit. Yep. Um, with with this next year in 2019, I hope we get some good news because PlayStation's working on something by not by not appearing at E3 for however many years it's been. All right. They've they've got something that they've got lined up that they're waiting for the right moment to announce. That just it. means we get to spend more time at the Microsoft side this year. That's true. Yeah, which will be yeah it'll be a really interesting year when we go to E3. Mm. Um, that we're just gonna have. I mean, Nintendo's going to have a presence there. Um, they'll still do their digital, um, whatever, direct. Do you think we get the new the new Switch this year? I think we do. I think we get yeah, a new Switch one, this year. Yeah, one hundred percent. It'll be like a. I, I bet it won't even be like a holiday thing. It'll be like a summer mm-hmm. thing. Yep, I agree. Like a spring. Like they're not gonna make it like a huge. They'll just be like, hey, this this works with everything you have on your Switch already. Yep. But in case you want extra battery life, a better screen. Since they have cloud saves and everything, yep. boom, boom, simple yep. enough. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think Nintendo's issue isn't. They've got the hardware down. Mm-hmm. They need to work more on this um, on the software side, like. Um, but they're doing their so well services. with the software as well, other than the online. Yeah, like, they're, they're online. Yeah, when I say software, I, I guess I mean um, maybe services is a better... better more internal uh, storage. That. That's another thing I want on the Switch. Oh, yeah, I haven't used SD cards as... Yeah, old kind of shitty. Yeah, yeah it's it's old. They And they, they tend to date themselves with things like that, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're they're trying to be like, oh, yeah, you can chat on your phone. Everyone's got a phone, so you can chat... I get it. It's a it's a innovative, a cool. I would like it as an option. Right. How about that? Give people the option. To if use it was it, an option, it. yeah, it'd be great. Because yep. you can do that with Microsoft. I can get in an Xbox Live party with you yeah. on this or with my computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Oh well. Hopefully, um, th- this next year uh, gives us some some exciting news as far as what we can expect from this last phase of the consoles and what we're looking at moving forward with. Um, Xbox, PlayStation, and, and Nintendo. Any uh, any final uh, closing remarks you have for either of those topics? Um, I'm excited to see what we get. I have high hopes for Bungie and the next Destiny title that comes out. I hope yeah. Microsoft does what they should have done with the Xbox One. And I want Mario Maker. There you go. Yep. Easy enough. Well, that uh, that closes out our uh, our fiftieth episode of Famcast. I- I'm glad we could do this, uh, Miss Trey. I-, I wish he could be here for this big milestone, but um, he's he's putting in work right now. But we'll, we'll have him soon. Uh, we are bringing back the bi-weekly schedule, so we won't be doing this next week. Uh, for one, uh, we'll be at PAX, so we won't be able to. Um, me and Trey are going to be traveling to PAX South with Ilio Chain and uh, Kitty Beth J. It'll be a great time there. Uh, meeting other streamers, game devs, having a good time. Then eventually, starting in February, these off weeks, so we'll have podcasts one Sunday. The next Sunday, we're actually going to be doing our D&D campaign, uh, Man and Monsters, again. Uh, so we'll have some new faces for that, which will be exciting. Um, as far as other announcements, we also announced FamCon, our, our first gaming meetup. Uh, that'll be February 23rd. So if you ha- I know a lot of you have it's already two seen year, it. It's our two already. years. Yes, so... And that's that's kind of why we wanted to do it in, in February. The twenty fourth is our our anniversary date, so we get to celebrate our our second year of being uh, fam with with all of our our awesome uh, our fellow streamers, uh, other game devs, and just gamers. Yeah. Uh, we we couldn't think of a, a better way to spend a celebration of of doing this for for two years than with with everyone else in the community. So hopefully you guys get to. Uh, show up for that if, if you're local or if you're willing to make a trip. Um, but in the meantime, if not, we're bringing back our bi-le- bi-weekly Sunday schedule of podcast and D&D. Yep. Um, and hopefully we'll bring you uh, some cool news from, from PAX South. I'm not sure what we're going to get into there. Um, expect lots of pictures of food in Discord. I can't wait to eat <laughs> so much food. Um, and I'm excited to meet Leo. Like, we, we 
play with Leo all the time. We we chat with Leo all the time, but we've never met met him or Rocket Grunt Mark. Uh, uh, Doritos uh, is going to be there. So we're, we get to meet so many cool people that we've only interacted with on Twitch. And same thing with uh, with Famcon. Uh, a lot of people from uh, uh, the Wonderland crew are going to be there, like Cipher. Um, uh, Leo, uh, Leo's in chat right now saying he's excited. So that's only a couple days away. Uh, Brutal Tostito says you guys have uh, been doing this for two years. Heck yeah. It doesn't feel like it. No. Um, I don't know. It, it feels longer than that, but also shorter than that at the same time. I can't really explain it. It's okay. We've, uh, we've, we've put in some, some good work and met some good people along the way. We've got you guys to thank for it. Of course. Um, so I, I won't, I won't uh, keep rambling here. I'll go ahead and close it out, at least as far as our live broadcast goes. Um, so make sure to tune in two weeks from now live on Twitch, or if you're listening, uh, you can always check it out on uh, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks for listening to FamCast. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash forallmanakind. You can also find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and Spotify, so make sure you follow us there to keep up with the latest episodes. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Hello! Bam! Welcome to the 50th episode of the FamCast! Pew, 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 pew. Brought to you by Trevor and Tim! We here live! Ladies and gentlemen, how are you folks today? And now you can do the real intro. <laughs>